This is Dr. Neil Burney. He lives in Bermuda, a stunning Atlantic island 640 miles east of North Carolina, USA. So now the, yeah. He spent the last 30 years practicing veterinary medicine, but now he's transferring his veterinary skills to help save, protect, and learn more about the incredible marine life of Bermuda's ocean. This is a completely wild shark. Alongside his dedicated ocean vet team are a number of scientists, yeah, this and probably here, marine biologists, off the back fin. and specialist master divers, helping to perform a number of unique and dangerous procedures in a bid to safeguard critically important marine species. Together, the team will be fitting satellite tags to huge tiger sharks, saving precious green turtles, dissecting giant blue marlin, and obtaining unique toxin samples from 45-ton migrating humpback whales. Yay! Whoa! My knees are like jello. Yes, man. This is Bermuda, home to Dr. Neil Burney, the ocean vet. The spotted eagle ray is one of the most strikingly beautiful marine animals, covered in a spotted pattern that is unique to each and every ray. In Bermuda, these rays are heavily protected, but throughout some of the rest of the world, it's a different story. Now categorized as near threatened, the future survival of this species is uncertain. Straight into the air, thanks. In this position, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Oxygen on. In this episode, Neil and his ocean vet crew patrol Bermuda's beautiful inshore waters on a scientific mission to protect the spotted eagle ray. I can handle a probe if you wish. Utilizing his extensive veterinary skills, Neil and his ocean vet team will perform a number of unique procedures to collect vitally important data from these beautiful marine animals. So we'll give this to you and you can slide this under him. By employing tried and tested capture methods alongside some of the very latest technology, Neil and his crew's skill will be tested to the limit as they attempt to corral and capture these rays in some of Bermuda's most idyllic surroundings. You never know what you're gonna find here in the Bermuda Triangle. To assist him on this testing mission, Neil has assembled his ocean vet crew at the Bermuda Aquarium dock. This weather, this day, epic. We're gonna get three or four rays today, for sure. As always, Neil is assisted by series marine biologist Choi Aming, underwater cameraman Andrew Kirkpatrick, boat pilot Dylan Ward, and support rib pilot Oscar Doyce. The team are also joined by spotted eagle ray scientist Dr. Matt Ajamian, ultrasonographer Lati Reining, aerial drone pilot Johnny Singleton, and Chris Fluck from Bermuda Conservation Services. Their combined experience and expertise is essential to the success of Neil and his crew's mission. So about four or five years ago, Dr. Matt Ajamian carried out his PhD work on Bermuda's spotted eagle rays. He answered a lot of the questions about their feeding behavior and their local migratory movements. However, two key questions remain unanswered. One, does our population of eagle rays differ from those found in the Gulf of Mexico? And secondly, do any of our rays undergo long-term migrations from the Bermuda platform? This year, we're gonna take a lot of DNA samples from some of these fish, and also, we're gonna attach archival satellite tags, and that way, hopefully, we can answer long-term migratory movement questions on these fish. Exact tag that we're putting on a lot of By attaching satellite tags and collecting DNA samples, Neil and his team can determine if these rays migrate off island and how their genetic identity compares with other ray populations. So these rays that we're seeing here, this is about an average size female. Combined with Matt's previous data, this will prove if this species is totally endemic to Bermuda. This would be a scientific breakthrough. If Bermuda's spotted eagle rays are proved to be endemic, then the conservation data on these protected rays can be used as a benchmark for unprotected populations, helping to establish an effective conservation strategy 
to protect this species all over the world. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get a ray. So what we're gonna do is head out in this boat using this jack net, put it in the water and circle the ray, put it on the boat and then transport it back here to the aquarium where we're gonna take our samples and attach our satellite tag. Now rays are very powerful and potentially dangerous. So the first thing we're gonna do is put it into this anesthesia bath here. So here's our pool set up. We've got oxygenated water in here and we're gonna use clove oil to anesthetize our fish. Matt, why are we choosing clove oil for our anesthetic? Well, Neil, clove oil is a naturally occurring uh, anesthetic and it has a variety of uses, but really is effective on marine fishes and uh, should put these rays under in a comfortable level so we can do all of our procedures. Excellent, and it's a naturally occurring material, so we have no problems with disposal that you do with some of the synthetic anesthetic agents. Let's go catch an eagle ray. Let's do it. Matt's research proved that Harrington Sound is an eagle ray hotspot. This large body of inland water provided over 50 sightings during Matt's study. These rays were often observed cruising the perimeter of the sound or gliding across the shallow bays of some of its beautiful islands. So we're here at a fantastic location on the backside of Trunk Island here in Harrington Sound. This is a great location to try and find eagle rays because this sand bed here is full of calico clams, one of their preferred foods. Hopefully we'll find two or three in here. Once sighted, encircling these rays with a capture net requires a great deal of skill and experience. These fish are fast, unpredictable, and highly maneuverable. So we found our first eagle ray. It's up here on the shallow sand flats right behind the island. We're gonna dig? Sure. I want you to come like up here somewhere. Right? Mm -hmm. Very exciting. So we're deploying the net. We've come right in against the shoreline. We're deploying the net, and we're going to try and capture this ray. Yeah, yeah. Just guide it. Don't even touch it. Don't even touch it. All right, cool. So we can see our ray is about 20 yards off the bow of the boat, and he's heading towards the corner where we put the net to start with. This is going perfectly at the moment. A lot he's going to jump in the water just to kind of give the ray a bit of a scare towards the net because sometimes they go one way or the other. So we like to have a swimmer in there just to have a body there and it kind of scares the ray in one direction and that ensures us being able to net it. Lottie also has the crucial task of closing off any gaps at the bottom of the net. Even the smallest hole can be an escape route for one of these rays. At the surface, Oscar and Matt have the challenging task of trying to maneuver the heavy net around this ray without it escaping. See if you can scare him into the bay, Oscar. Just do your best. This is like cat and mouse with an eagle ray, highly mobile and actually highly intelligent. They have one of the biggest brain sizes per body mass of any fish. And this guy is trying to outwit us right here, right now. But not to be outmaneuvered by this ray, Neil deploys the rest of his team to close off any escape routes. This is a crucial moment. One slip now, and his team could lose this ray for good. So the eagle ray is right here in front of us, heading towards Chris. Our job right now is to keep him corralled as we gradually get this net smaller and smaller so we can capture this ray. The reason we brought the camera is because uh, the eagle rays actually have a spotted pattern on the back, and it's actually a unique spot pattern on every ray. So if we get a good photo of it, it's like a fingerprint. So what Matt's gonna do is uh, he's gonna keep them, and basically we can catalog all the rays so we can identify each individual ray by its pattern. So we'll give this to you, and you can slide this under him. Neil and his team must be extremely careful working close to this animal. These rays are equipped with several venomous barbs located at the base of their tails. If one of these barbs were to puncture a vital organ, the effects could be fatal. Okay. okay. All right, you guys got that? Right. Do you yeah. have that right now? Huh? Yeah, yeah. I have it. You got the tape? I'm good. Yeah, the tape's right here. Right. Do you want to... So we have our ray safely in the boat. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, get yeah. the tape, and yeah. we're going to tape its barbs. These are the very dangerous five to six inch long venomous barbs and sadly made most famous by the death of the late Steve Irwin who took a six inch long stingray barb through the heart. We're gonna make sure that doesn't happen to any of us. We're gonna tape these barbs up close to his tail to get out of the danger. Yeah, sure. yeah, sure. Our priorities are taping up the barbs 
and getting water into his Got gills. It. So I'm holding the mouth open. Matt has just put water in the gills, so he's got flow over the gills. You can see water coming out there. He's in good shape. We're just gonna put a towel over his eyes just so he can see what's going on to keep his stress level low. Okay. You can actually see this guy. With the ray now secure and stabilized, Neil is satisfied it can be safely transported back to the Bermuda Aquarium. So we're running full speed and Matt is checking the flow and the water is flowing over his gills. And we're almost at the aquarium, we're almost there. This guy has become one of the Ocean Vet research crew. He's being honored to be allowed to wear the shirt. Very nice. Good job, everybody. Yeah. What a wicked team. Coming up, Neil and his team sample and release the captured spotted eagle ray. Neil and Choi respond to a call reporting an injured ray. And Neil and his crew have a fight on their hands to capture their second ray and complete their mission to help protect this amazing species. Back in the action, Neil and his team have successfully transported their captured ray back to the Bermuda Aquarium yeah, yeah, yeah. for sampling. Straight into the aspect, so in this position, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Oxygen on? Yeah, okay, we'll turn it on now. So our ray is in his anesthetic solution, he's in the clove oil, he's gradually going to get a little sedated we hope, and then we're going to go ahead, we're going to get a blood sample, we're going to get a DNA clip, and we're going to attach our archival satellite tag. To minimize unnecessary stress to this animal, Neil is keen to complete the procedures as quickly as possible. Alright, thanks Matt. So this is our archival pop-off tag and we're going to implant this, it's going to release after six months, it's going to come to the surface and deploy and upload all the information about this ray's movements during those six months. We're That's going right. to put this right through the muscular tissue either side of the vertebra of this fish's tail. That's right, and it's going to go right through just like so, and as it gets pushed through, uh, this tube is going to go with it. And as you can see, this ray is not bothered by this procedure. The clove oil is working brilliantly. All so right, now so I'm going to plant the tube on this side, correct? Right here. This is very similar to some of the procedures we use when we're doing our small animal practice, particularly when I'm doing fracture repairs in small cats or dogs. We thread a wire under the jaw in exactly the same way. Beautiful. So we have a smooth connection from our swivel, from our tag, to our swivel, to our fish to our ray, I should say, and we're good to go. This is going to trail behind him and offer minimal drag as he swims through the water column. With the health of this ray also a key focus, Neil, Choi, and Matt take some vital blood samples. So Matt, why are we going to draw this blood sample from this ray? This blood's going to actually give us a little insight into the physiology of these animals, how healthy they are, what types of toxins are actually in them as well. And we can also use some of this tissue that we're going to draw from our clip to get DNA analysis, right, and compare Correct this with other populations. Yes, sir. This DNA sample will be sent to scientists in California and compared with other ray populations to determine if Bermuda's rays are indeed genetically unique. Good, okay, we're good. All right, let's get so back. let's move this yeah. ray. With the welfare of this ray Neil's top priority, he's keen to begin reviving the animal as soon as possible. It's starting to come out a little bit, which is good. Okay. All right, so we've got the ray moved into our recovery bath. We've got our oxygenation stone in. Choi is actually running fresh water directly over his gills. We're going to get rid of all that clove oil anesthetic from this fish, wake him up, get him weighed, and get him back into the oh, ocean. Yeah, there he goes. Yeah. Pumping I can hard. feel it. It's like almost like a little tongue sticking out, licking my hand. With all of their procedures taking just over 10 minutes, Neil has ensured the stress to this ray has been kept to a minimum. Okay, we're going to lift him onto the frame. And with the clove oil solution now purged from this ray, Neil is confident the animal is strong enough to be released. So, do you want to grab the back end? Got to grab the back end. Okay, let's get him off. So I'm just bringing him off. And as we can see, I can assess his spherical movement. And we're going to wait until we have some movement oh. of his fins. And once we do, we're going to see he's already starting to move. So we're now in a position to release the vet wrap from his tail. Leave his barbs free. Just for the audience above here who are looking down, this is what we do not want to get caught by. I so this it. one, these venomous barbs are what we were trying to avoid earlier, but now as we release this fish, we can leave him with his protection. 
in case he comes into contact with something that he needs to protect himself from in the future. In Bermuda, this animal faces threats from large marine predators, such as tiger sharks and even hammerheads. But in other oceans, these animals are also hunted by bull sharks and black tips. I think he's, yeah. he's getting ready to go. So I'm ready, whenever, Joy? Yeah, whenever you, you guys him? release, I'll just follow him just to ensure that he looks good and swims away healthy. There he goes, and he's gliding down as we watch him. Yeah. Perfect. So that's our first eagle ray tagged and released. We've got a few more to go, but it's looking very good so far. Neil and his team will have to wait and see if the DNA samples and satellite tag data corroborate Matt's theory that Bermuda's eagle rays are endemic to the island. But it's not just strategies like this that help ensure this animal's survival. At the Bermuda Aquarium, their team of scientists also respond to reports of injured marine animals. When a call comes in about an injured spotted eagle ray, Neil and his ocean vet crew are the first to respond. So we've received a call from a resident of Harrington Sound just up here. He's seen an injured eagle ray in front of his property. It looks like he's got a laceration to the wing and some abrasions, and it's circling in the same place all the time, so it doesn't look well. We're going to see if we can assess it in the water, and if we think it needs to be captured to help treat it, that's what we're going to do. Oh, hang on. Hang on, he's right in front of us. So you got a spot on it? He's right in front of us. He's right here. Look, he's 20 yards off the stern of the boat. Right there, right? And he's heading out right now. So we can see the laceration on the left side of the wing, and it's about a third of the way in from the tip. But the ray is adapting to it and is swimming pretty strongly right now. It's incredible considering it's almost the, the wing is actually cut and basically it's kind of flapped like a chunk, like tilting like that, but she still managed to swim fine. So it just shows the resiliency of these animals. I won't say it's cosmetic, but I don't think it's life-threatening. Yeah. And so I think the stress of us bringing her in, in a pr already a stressed animal, and further stressing it, I think, would not be the best call. So that's the call for now. We're not going to net this ray, and we're going to leave her be, but we're going to monitor her. That's exactly what we should do. Back at the dock, Neil and his team are keen to go in search of a second ray, but there's a problem. So unfortunately, we've developed an oil leak on one of our engines, which has basically stopped us from using this boat. So we've transferred the net out, and we're going to go with the aquarium boat called the Chevron. Floggy, what do you think? Things happen if you just go with the punches. Got to roll with roll it, man. Got to roll with it. Keep smiling. Going to go hunt for an eagle ray, just using a different boat. With time slipping away, this could be their final chance. So we've just seen a ray coming along the edge of this shoreline over here to behind me. We're going to park the net on this promontory here, and we're going to reverse back and try and encircle this ray in the bay. We've got the helicopter up over the net. We're going to see if he can spot him. Neil and his team face a much sterner challenge this time. The overall visibility is poor, and the lead lining at the bottom of the net is entangled on the seabed. So I'm going to go and try and be another hand on the lead line, try and get it freed up so we can get around this ray. Neil's drone has zeroed in on the ray's location, and the team now face the challenging task of trying to free the net without letting the ray escape. Four feet off the bottom. All right, Look, come on this side and tend the hole there. I'm trying to, there's a four foot hole under I'm the ray. The hole. If you don't tend that hole. As the team begins to think they might lose this ray, Neil and Andrew Kirkpatrick spot it, making a break for a gap in the net. My ray identification skills are good. It is a female. With the ray now located and the net freed from the bottom, Neil and the team can maneuver it into a safe position for capture. The ray is right down in here. We're just about to pinch everything off and lift her out of the water. It is a girl, exactly what we've been looking for. The fact this ray is a female is hugely significant. It means that Neil can ultrasound this ray to see if it is carrying pups. Data on this animal's reproductive cycle is extremely rare and would be a significant addition to the other data they've collected. So we're on the run, heading as fast as we can back to the aquarium dock. We have the ray comfortably covered, eyes are covered. The water, watch this water flowing out of these spiracles. Beautiful, it means she's being well oxygenated by the water from the barrel at the back. 
Back at the aquarium, Neil and his team's priority is to anesthetize the animal as quickly as possible. So we're bringing the ray straight up and into the anesthetic. Beautiful. There we go. Although at first the ray appears distressed, by temporarily covering its eyes and allowing the clove oil to take effect, the animal is soon calm and fully anesthetized. So we're going to bring Lottie Reining from Dolphin Quest in, who's our ultrasonographer. And she's going to let us see whether there are any immature rays inside this adult ray. So, Lottie, what do you think? Let's see. Exciting Let's stuff. Let's have a look. All right. So we'll slide her a little bit forward so that you can reach. She seems really comfortable Perfect. in this anesthetic solution. I'm just going to move the camera out of the way a little bit. So what we're looking for is movement within the stilomic or body cavity. If there are any small rays, they'll be rather like little wrapped up tacos folded up on themselves. And there can be up to two or three, correct? Up to four, actually. Up to four. Yeah. Female rays will mature from between four and six years old and give birth to live pups after one year of pregnancy. This ray is quite small for a pregnant female, and so it's possible she's not yet carrying pups. So I'm seeing no evidence of uh, juvenile rays within this adult female, so I think we're free to go ahead and put our tags in this fish, do our DNA clips, and take our blood samples. OK, I lost the vacuum on that one. Although this ray will not provide any reproductive data for Neil and his team, she can still provide important migratory data via her satellite tag and crucial DNA samples for genetic analysis. There we go. She's going to start to swim. Here she goes. The release of this spotted eagle ray concludes a scientific journey that has seen Neil and his team pushed to their absolute limits. Capturing these rays has not been easy, but working together, the team has succeeded. Fantastic. To see that fish swim away strongly into the current of Flats Inlet, just beautiful. These fish deserve our attention and our respect and understanding. If this population can continue to thrive in Bermuda, they can be ambassadors for the ocean. Job, buddy. Teamwork makes the dream work. Since the filming of this program, the satellite tracking data has confirmed that these animals make no long range migrations, but the DNA samples are a match to other eagle ray populations. The team's evidence suggests that millions of years ago, Bermuda must have been more accessible to this species. As the Earth's surface changed, so did the position of Bermuda. The result is a unique and precious population that moved with the island. The future of this species is bright, but one slip could see these glorious creatures disappear from these waters forever. Beautiful, the spotted eagle ray. Long may they reign. Woo. Next time on Ocean Vet, Neil and his team enter the world of the tiger shark. They'll be tested to the limit as they try to install a satellite tagging computer to an 800-pound monster shark. And Neil and his team swim with these animals to see if there's any truth behind their reputation as ferocious man-eaters.